In this world, time is not a straight line, but a huge present that holds all the versions of you that have ever existed. I'm going to show you the best way to access your previous lives, or more accurately, the parallel incarnations of your soul, and take you on an in-depth exploration of the meaning of our existence. Dolores Cannon's amazing work is at the heart of our investigation. Her deep understandings of past lives, spiritual growth, and the changing of consciousness have shown seekers from all over the world the way. Her groundbreaking quantum healing hypnosis technique, which is explained in books like The Convoluted Universe, has given us new ways to understand things that make us question what we think we know about the world. I'm excited to share ideas in this video that will change the way you think about your own life story forever. We often think of our past lives as separate chapters from this one, but they are actually separate components of the same fabric that have been meticulously woven into the present. We are not looking back at who we were, but at who we are now in the context of our soul's journey through time and space. Even though things are going badly in the world right now, the thought that this could be the highest point of awareness in history is a powerful reminder of how powerful awakening is. There's an interesting idea that aliens may have been a big part of Earth's history from the beginning, connecting their own fate with ours in ways that are hard to understand. We need to find the patterns that determine our fate and learn how to wisely and consciously navigate our way through life. Bring your friends along as we talk about how all of our lives are connected and how they have shaped us into the people we are today. By looking deeper into what it means to be human, I've learned the profound truth that we are not merely the product of our current life's experiences, but a complicated tapestry made from the elements of many other lives. The idea of as above, so below really speaks to me. It makes me think of our lives as a mirror that shows not only our past and future, but also other realities that are happening at the same time. This idea pushes the limits of what we think we know and shows us how big our spiritual essence really is. Before I talk about this idea in more detail, let me tell you a story that shows how these parallel realities can affect our present lives. During one of Dolores' sessions, a woman talked to a clairvoyant to get some answers. At that time, she was in a relationship with a partner who let her down easily and made her feel abandoned and ignored most of the time. This spiritual seer told her stories about a past life they shared in a faraway village, where she was left to take care of herself. Even though it's still not clear how true these claims are, the story helped her see how her life kept repeating itself. An important turning point in her life was this epiphany, which set her on a new course, introduced her to new people, and shed light on her spiritual road. This story shows a deep truth. The patterns we find ourselves in now are reflections of the themes that run through our lives, crossing both dimensions. These patterns are what connect us to our past and future selves. Each change in our awareness frees us from the cycles that hold us back. People often think of karma as a rigid system of causes and effects, but it's really just our soul's lessons and chances to grow working together. When we shine a light on the shadowy corners of our unconscious patterns and choose to forgive and accept them, we break the karmic chains and are free to write another story. The key to breaking out of the cycles that have been running through our lives is to become more conscious and integrate what you've learned. As I move through my own life and peel back layers of unconscious habits and beliefs, I start the freeing process of letting go. This release gives me the freedom to look back at the things that happened to me from a different point of view, which changes not only my present path, but also the way I will be in the future. Being fully present in the present moment and in tune with our own inner rhythms is crucial. This realization makes it clear how important it is. One memory stands out as a wise reminder from my past that shines a light on my present and guides our future as a whole. In ancient Chem, which is now called Egypt, our culture wasn't about worshipping gods. Instead, it was about becoming the godlike parts of ourselves that we hadn't yet found. This path for initiates was a never-ending search for I am. It was a journey of questioning that took us layer after layer until we got to the core of who we are. Even though this ancient wisdom was used at a very different time, it is still very useful for us as we try to figure out how to live in the modern world. Today, when we move into Aquarius, 
we learn lessons that were important in Leo 12,000 years ago, but with a twist. You don't need to say, I am the ruler or I am enough at this time. You need to say, I am and I am enough. This shift toward recognizing our inner power and potential isn't about making a utopia come true. It's about finding peace in the conflicts that come with living. Because when we live in harmony, we don't stop fighting. We better understand and deal with the problems that make us who we are. Skepticism has always been a lighthouse for me, showing me the way through the complicated world of existence. Not because I have doubts about who I am, but because I want to find authenticity, a truth that speaks to me deeply. I often whisper, show me the truth, as an appeal for real understanding in a world where illusion often passes for reality. Due to my willingness to be open, many signs and coincidences have happened, each one helping me learn more about the universe and my place in it. Finding out about the mysteries of our past lives and planning our paths for future lives can be very interesting, but it also calls us to a deeper understanding. Our fixation on identities and the stories we've told ourselves over the years frequently obscures the bright truth of our existence. We are at a turning point on Earth and on the verge of a dimensional shift. The call is to transcend, to go beyond the limits of identity, to let go of our attachments to who we were or who we could become, and to accept who we really are. When we observe a plant, we notice its roots delve deep into the darkness seeking out the essential minerals and water, symbolic of emotions that need to be absorbed. This process, in turn, generates glucose, likened to the essence of love, which then extends outward to everyone around it. This growth from the center, spreading branches wide with love and opening up to receive light through its leaves, is a process of transformation. Fruit serves as a metaphor for the project that the received light fuels, Yet the purpose of the fruit is not an end in itself, but to nourish the seed, which then descends back into the darkness of the earth, laying the groundwork for new life. This cycle illustrates that the journey towards light is ultimately a return to the darkness, a beautiful pattern nature reveals continually. Parasitic plants, floating from one branch to another and living off others, miss this cycle of self-sustenance and balance that a tree, the symbol of life in the universe, embodies. Rising one's vibration, then, is about embracing transformation and evolving through cycles without getting trapped in repetitive patterns. Rising your vibration isn't about leaving something behind. It's about understanding it from a new perspective and utilizing it wisely. It's about expanding your mind to see beyond the darkness or challenges, recognizing them as the very nutrients needed for growth. A tree's growth is rooted in the soil's richness. Similarly, raising your vibration means shifting perspectives, opening up to new understandings of yourself, your reality, and how to use this reality for evolution, not stagnation. It's about diversifying your philosophical influences and embracing different spiritual practices to broaden your perspective, the true goal of spiritual growth. This process, from roots to tree to seed and back to roots, signifies a deepening of self-knowledge from various angles. The purpose of existence, as echoed in the sentiment, know thyself, is to continually deepen our understanding of ourselves through the cycles of evolution and reincarnation. One of the greatest human conflicts is the desire for an end point, a finality that perhaps stems from our mortality. But realizing that existence is continuous, without limit, shifts our perspective. Cultural narratives that promise a paradisiacal end frequently influence our search for a safe haven. Yet, paradise, originally meaning a walled garden, is a concept born from a need for safety rather than a state of eternal peace. In contrast, traditions outside the Middle East, like those in South America, focus on being part of the continuous flow of life, not reaching a static end. Raising one's vibration isn't about transcending to a higher place, but integrating and transforming our understanding of all of life's aspects, including its darker, more challenging parts. This expansion and transformation are about embracing the entirety of existence, recognizing the interconnectedness of all life, and moving beyond singular philosophical confines to embrace a multitude of perspectives, enriching our journey through existence. 
Celestial beings have traveled to Earth on many occasions throughout history, but particularly at a crucial time. Their home was fading, and in their quest for transcendence, they sought continuity through us. Their intention wasn't dominion, but legacy, intertwining their essence with ours, thus catalyzing the evolution of humanity. Without their intervention, our ancestors might have remained vastly different, akin to the gorillas of today. It was their influence that sculpted our civilization, infusing their wisdom into our very being. However, it's important to keep in mind that we originated on Earth and are fundamentally a part of this world, despite extraterrestrial influence. The Anunnaki, or Children of the Skies, ventured from the cosmos, embedding their existence into ours and nurturing civilization through our lineage before their departure. While their physical presence has waned, their legacy endures within us, marking a profound chapter in the human story. Delving into Atlantis, this civilization thrived around 20,000 years ago, reaching its zenith in the era of Virgo, about 15,000 years ago. Here, humanity, in concert with cosmic visitors, forged a society that understood its unity with the cosmos. They harnessed the Earth's technology, channeling information through stone and plant, using vibration and frequency to build a global network of communication. This network, linking pyramids to the stars, served as a cosmic gateway, binding the planet to distant constellations and civilizations. However, as the age shifted, so too did Atlantis's unity, fragmenting under the weight of territorial claims. This division severed the intricate web of connectivity necessary for their advanced society. Mistrust and war ensued, leading to the network's downfall and, with it, catastrophic climate shifts. The once great civilization succumbed to floods and earthquakes, marking the end of an era. Extraterrestrial guidance became sporadic, awaiting a time when Earth could once again align with cosmic consciousness. The Akashic records suggest that all knowledge, past and future, remains accessible. Figures like Tesla tapped into this repository, yet widespread utilization requires a collective resonance. This era, characterized by disparate frequencies, limits our access to higher knowledge, akin to tuning into a radio station that's just out of range. Yet, through concerted effort and shared vision, humanity can realign with these ancient frequencies unlocking the wisdom of past civilizations. This process of self-discovery and collective activation isn't about external technologies, but about recognizing ourselves as the most sophisticated technology. Understanding our human complexity is the key to unlocking our potential, not as solitary beings, but as integral components of a universal machine. So the best way to connect with our past and future is to stay in the present. When we become more aware of our current habits, beliefs, and emotional states, we set the stage for a change that will last forever. We are being asked to let go of the parts of our identity that have kept us separate, and to enter a state of consciousness where love and happiness are not just ideas, but the very core of who we are. This knowledge helps us break the karmic bonds that hold us together, freeing us from the repetitive patterns of identifying with our avatars, the bodies we live in. When we come into this reality, we forget for a moment who we really are. It's like amnesia, and it keeps us committed to the earthly experience. It's smart to forget, because remembering everything could get in the way of our purpose here.